all right so today's lecture is based on types and causes of epilepsy right as you have seen the uh, background image again i try to insert a relevant image so you can see that there's a zigzag line it means that some activity is going on in the brain right and um, the activity is is spreading right so this is what epilepsy is all about right so normally we do find people falling on the floor um, having some jerks right these are the layman uh, observation and these are the only observations when when one see they say that a person is going through epilepsy or the attack of epilepsy right uh, so today we are going to talk that this is the not only symptom when uh, and on, not only if a person would fall on the floor and they would start jerking that is not the only case when a person would be identified to be going through the epileptic attack however there are more kinds of epileptic attacks that we are going to talk today right okay so there are some common triggers of seizures which uh, of course lead to epilepsy right so the common triggers are not taking the epileptic medicine right uh, feeling tired and not sleeping well stress alcohol and recreational drugs flashing or flickering lights hormonal fluctuation certain medications we have already discussed a lot that promote seizures then we have missing meals uh, having an illness which causes a high temperature that is why you see when a mother observes her child is having a high grade fever she ultimately starts getting worried right and she places uh, cold water those wipes on the head and at the back of the neck in uh, so that the temperature will be reduced because she's worried that what if this condition will lead to epileptic attacks and all that right okay now there are two major kinds of epilepsy right one is idiopathic another one is symptomatic or cryptogenic right when we talk about idiopathic epilepsy that means that this is related to genetics right uh, and this is passing on through the family and all right however there are further more to, in your book a lip and court right only symptomatic is written right however we have uh, one more category that is cryptogenic as well right so the one that does not is not related to the genetic uh, okay so this is called as symptomatic or cryptogenic so the thing is if there are lesions in the brain that are documented and because of which epilepsy is happening then we call it sy symptom symptomatic right and if there are no lesions in the brain right um, so um, so uh, still epilepsy is happening then we are calling it cryptogenic right okay so ways to detect epilepsy we have been talking about these scans right we have been talking about mri scan we have been talking about pet scan and today i'm going to give you one more name that is spect okay mri stands for magnetic resonance imaging uh pet stands for positron emission tomography now the word tomography means that there are certain rays which are going to penetrate and then they're going to produce a result right okay in the last lecture i remember i promise you guys that i will talk about this terminology even more right so here we go we have done that okay so single photon emission coherence tomography right okay now if we want to now if we want to generalize um, the these symptoms again and again right oh my god these girls are messaging me that they cannot enter the class uh, guys please tell everybody that i have not locked the class and anybody can enter the class right i have uh, disabled the waiting area right the waiting room i have disabled it so everybody who would uh, click on the link 
they would join the class live. Okay. All right. So the thing is, we are going to talk about the Caesars. Okay. And we're, we're going to talk about just like um, earthquake, right? Earthquake. That sometimes um, uh, it is centralized and the other time it is on a massive level. Right. And it spreads all over. Right. So same same is the case with Caesars as well. All right. Sometimes the origin of Caesars is located at one particular area of the brain only. Right. Okay. So that is called partial Caesar. Right. If you can see here waves on top. Right. Uh, you would notice that not all waves are showing activity. Few waves are showing activity and rest are exhibiting normal functions, right? However, there is, okay. Tuba, are you here in the class because you're, somebody's calling me. Hello? Jibita? Ma'am, uh, it's not only me who is facing this issue. In fact, half of the classes facing the issue. I tried to connect to my brother's mobile too. But connect connect. I don't know what happened. I guess the server is down for Zoom. Okay, okay, no problem. All right. Okay, you guys... Back-to-back, Eman, Manahil, Sana, messages are connected to us. So, connecting is showing up. Mom's class is not open. Okay, okay. Tell them to give you the screenshots. Okay? Okay, okay enough is all right guys hmm. yeah so we were talking here about the types of seizures right sometimes the original is partial right at one area of the brain only right and sometimes it is generalized that it would start from one area but then it would quickly spread to other parts of the area of the brain as well right and then we would see this excitation guys you know about names of neurotransmitters already right can you tell me that what do you think if i am telling you that this is because of excitatory neurons neurotransmitters right can you i think there's a lot of distraction today wait uh can you give me names in the chat box names of the neurotransmitters and can you predict which neurotransmitter is going high which neurotransmitter is going low i'm giving you one minute and i want you to tell me in the chat box okay okay very good anusha very nice i'm super proud of you good are there more responses i'm waiting for one more student to give me a response and then we would Okay, I think Amir Muhammad, very good, bete. Uh, Rabia, very good, very good. So the thing is, you all have predicted, right? You all are saying that it is excitatory. It means that glutamate receptors would have, uh, should have been activated, right? And GABA would have gone low, right? So now, what do you think? What should be the target of the therapy? target of the therapy is to reduce this excitation right and to uh, enhance the inhibitory effects right today we are going to talk about the types and uh, the causes so we are not going into that depth okay now we are talking about the caesar's classification since i have um, stolen this image from somewhere so it is not that clear but uh, it was the best uh, classification already drawn so in order to save my time, I just, you know, placed it here. I hope you're able to read it. That is Caesar's classification. That is partial and generalized. Partial is that it originates from one part of the brain. And generalized is that the entire brain is going through the epileptic, right? Okay. When we talk about partial, so guys, memorize it right now. That there are only two types of partial Caesar's. That one is simple and the other one is complex, right? And when we talk about uh, generalized, right, there is absent Caesar, which is very, very uh, uh, scary. Uh, it scared me, it scares me off whenever I read about it. And um, there was a, uh, there was a TV serial as well by the name of House. 
i think um, yeah house or doctor house something like that so in that uh, they actually showed a nurse going through this absent seizure okay we'll talk about it more okay then we have myoclonic seizure and then we have tonic clonic and then we have a status epilepticus which is not mentioned here just you guys write it okay all right so talk about the partial seizure first of all right uh okay in partial seizure what is happening is that the patient awake and aware of uncontrollable jerks beginning in one part of the body right and patient experiences a distorted environment may see or hear things feel unexplained powerful emotions and nausea so basically the patient is aware right and they are experiencing the jerks and those seizures right okay then is the complex par uh, partial one right so this is basically more associated with temporal lobe okay now what is going to happen is that usually starts with blank stare blank stare blank stare uh, chewing and random activity person may be dazed clumsy unaware unresponsive and mumble may run struggle flail and uh, once pattern establishes same set of actions usually occur with each seizure right so again this the, these are the two types of partial seizures in which the people are moving their understanding and everything okay um all right then we have the generalized one right and in generalized one you see uh again i like i said that the abnormal electrical discharge would actually affect entire hemispheres of the brain right okay so it may be convulsive or non convulsive which is even more scary because here we are talking about that it may cause the body to um uh, to shake right and it won't right and imagine somebody going to um the epileptic attack for a longer length of time without moving so nobody else would know apart from that person so it sounds scary right okay first of all we are going to talk about tonic clonic seizure right okay in this kind of seizure what happens is that there are two phases okay the first phase is tonic in which there's a stiffening okay then and there's arcing all right of the body and the second phase is clonic in which there is a rhythmic jerking of limbs okay and after some time the person would relax completely and here when the person is getting relaxed and all okay um uh, he, here the only thing you can do is that you can talk to the person very calmly and tell them that it's all right and you should be observant there no uh, no such thing around them which might hurt them you should not place anything in their mouth in order to support them or in order to stop their teeth from um, hurting themselves right because if you'll do so they will hurt themselves even more right okay and um, uh, the third uh, weird thing is that uh, you know they they could be incontinence so what happens is the a person might release uh, uh, you know might um excrete out a uh, urine or might uh, defecate so uh, you know the person who is with them has to be very compassionate and be very calm and one more thing important is that whenever you see an a person going through an epileptic attack you should note the time okay and if the time is more than 5 minutes it means that Uh, the per uh, the person uh, has to be rushed to hospital right and uh, uh, the immediate care has to be taken right but if let's say an epileptic attack is not the first time and um, it lasts less than 5 minutes so um, there's no need to go to a hospital or to hit an emergency or no all that okay uh, but if the person is going through an epileptic attack for the very first time in their life so uh, a medical care has to be taken because maybe it's due to any other underlying condition and we need to find it out and we need to sort it out right okay uh all right here i have inserted all right then we have the other 
kind of epilepsy which is very scary to me which is absence or petit mal epilepsy now what happens is that person okay imagine the person okay the person is just staring okay and um, that is it right and a person himself is unaware and after the epileptic attack uh, there would be rapid blinking and chewing movement imagine just this and even the person himself or herself does not know that what he exactly or she exactly went through and it usually lasts for a few seconds okay all right so next up we have myoclonic seizure uh, i have inserted a gif image uh, so this is this that a person is sitting and they they would give you a rapid jerk all of a movement okay or all of a sudden right so that is myoclonic seizure sudden brief massive muscle jerks that may involve the whole body or parts of the body to jerk may cause the person to spill whatever they're holding or fall on the floor right okay then we have febrile convulsions or febrile seizures or febrile epilepsy so this is more related to uh, the temperature uh, of the body when the body's temperature gets higher than 38 degrees celsius okay that is why we say that we have to monitor body's temperature right so um, whenever such a condition would happen obviously um, the child uh, specifically it happens in ch children right um, so uh, we have to ensure that the infection due to which temperature of the body is rising it is subsided as it gets subsided um, as a result the epilepsy will also be treated right and um, if this see there, there are further subtypes of febrile seizures right simple complex and then we have status epilepticus which is the most um, uh, serious one right so if the febrile seizure right um, is there for more than 30 minutes so it means that it is for more than five minutes it means that it is uh, status epilepticus and now the medical emergency has to be um, uh, contacted and in febrile seizures, again, there would be a uh, tonic-clonic movement, right? There would be tonic phase in which the whole body would arc up. And then there would be the clonic phase in which the whole body would start to jerk. And febrile conversion, we have given specifically the name to the clonic, cl uh, tonic-clonic phase because of the reason that it is caused due to hyperthermia, right? Okay, then we have the status epilepticus, which is, again, the most alarming one, right? So here what happens is, if you can see here, two or three uh, see, uh, more seizure ha seizures are happening, right? And this usually extends more than uh, five minutes and usually lasts for around 30 minutes, imagine. So Asteris epilepticus is the most serious epileptic attack, right? And if, read these lines, these are very important. These may be partial, primary, generalized, convulsive, or non-convulsive. So status epilepticus is life-threatening and requires emergency treatment, right? Um, and just imagine a status epilepticus without shaking, without non-convulsant, right? So just imagine how serious it can be, right? So please be observant of the people around you and take care if they 